you ultimately, if somebody looks bad, right. and you work on the flat side of the street, you know, you're out of the sun and everything, if they look bad, uh, you're not going to do much to fix it. What I, what I usually do is I'll do certain odds and ends within the camera to make things a little bit better for them, but the truth of the matter is you can't fix that. And so um, in old school Hollywood terms, you know, they'd stuff an arc up somebody's ass and turn it on. <laughs> Gordon Willis was an American cinematographer who is best known for his work on Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather series, as well as Woody Allen's Annie Hall in Manhattan. Willis was the son of a makeup artist at Warner Brothers Studios in Brooklyn during the 1930s. Willis tried his hand at acting in summer stock theaters, but his interest soon shifted to stage lighting and still photography. He spent four years in the United States Air Force during the Korean War, working on the production of training films. After the war, Willis was an assistant cameraman on documentaries and commercials. After earning his credit as a cinematographer for 1970's The End of the Road, Willis would go on to work for some of the most influential directors of what is now seen as the golden age of American filmmaking. He captured America's urban paranoia in three films he shot with Alan J. Pacula, 1971's Clute, 1974's The Parallax View, and 1976's All the President's Men. He also worked with Hale Ashby on The Landlord, James Bridges on The Pepper Chase, and Herbert Ross on Pennies from Heaven, as well as shooting all three of Coppola's Godfather films. Originally, Willis turned down the first two Godfather films until Coppola told him they wouldn't look the same without him. Bono said, Bono said, what have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? Uh, a lot of things that I do with overhead lighting or a lot of things with that form of lighting actually came out of a necessity to deal with Marlon Brando in a given kind of makeup. It was an example of designing something to make one person work and it was extended throughout the rest of the movie. I got a lot of criticism because they said, well, you can't see Brando's eyes. There were times in some of his scenes where I deliberately did not want to see his eyes so that you saw this mysterious um, human being thinking about something or about to do something, but you didn't really know what the hell was going on. Gordon, the Prince of Darkness, huh? I, I haven't, like, uh, examined uh, underexposing a lot because I'm terrified of it. But with people like Gordon who know just how much to do it and uh, all that kind of thing, uh, he has made an art of, uh, of underexposure. I may have gone too far a couple of times. I think there was a scene between Al and his mother was played by Morgana King in part two. I did one scene, I went too far. I think Rembrandt went too far a couple of times. It wasn't uh, the fact that, that it was so dark, it was the fact that the studio said, how are we gonna show this at the drive-ins? That's the old adage to say, you can't, you gotta get, you gotta put a light in, you gotta see the people, you gotta see the people because of the drive-ins, the drive-ins, the drive-ins. Well, the drive-ins were going out at that time, so that didn't mean much to us. Oh, New Jersey. When I shot Godfather 1, uh, my decision to use yellow in the movie, it, the movie was very yellow, yellow-red. It bordered on this kind of brassy feeling. The reasons for that were because I just thought it was right, but yellow broke out in the motion picture business related to period movies for a long time after that. It's not one thing that you do from a visual point of view that makes anything work. The art direction has to be right. The wardrobe has to be right. The shot structure has to be right. And the lighting has to accommodate whatever it is you're introducing related to filtering, etc. So you can't just do one thing.
There was no mistake in Gordy Willis's work. The magnificent thing that was done was the fact that he came back to it after several years and came right in. And if you put the three together, it's almost like, my gosh, they never stopped making the picture. Yeah, which is, uh, I think, a tribute. Willis's work became celebrated for his ability to use shadows and underexposed film with a subtlety and expressivity previously unknown on colored film stock, with probably his best known example being Don Corleone's study in The Godfather. Willis also had a preference for filming at the magic hour before twilight. When the sun is low, it creates a golden glow. Willis created the trope of warm ambers to denote nostalgic glow for the past for the young Vito sequences of The Godfather Part II. Many films since then have copied the cinematic technique when depicting pre-World War II America. For his work in cinematography, Gordon Willis took home seven awards and 12 nominations, including an Academy Award for Unsurpassed Mastery of Light, Shadow, Color, and Motion. <laughs> 